So let's continue with this distribution to talk about the second standard. This, this standard, we haven't talked about table A yet. Now they want us to use, um, to find proportions of Z values and Z scores from the standard normal distribution. So I wanna show you real quick what the standard normal distribution is. And I'm gonna continue using Tiger Woods uh, information that we've been talking about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sketch out his normal distribution right here in this area. And then I'm going to transform it into what's called the standard normal distribution. So this is Tiger Woods normal distribution where I've just added one, two, three standard deviations and subtracted one, two, three, because we know um, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule is applicable to this. But what I want to show you is called the standard normal distribution. It's really simple. All it does is it takes every observation from this density curve and it converts them to their z-score. So if you remember the formula for a z-score, we're going to take each observation, subtract it from the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. And this is going to take us to what's called the standard normal curve, and this is applicable to any normal distribution. So for example, you should know that standard deviation is the average distance from the mean. And if this is one standard deviation below the mean, then guess what the z-score is for 296? It's negative one because it's negative one standard deviation is below the mean. 312, the z-score for, Z for 312 is positive one because it's one standard deviation above the mean. And just to show you that, let's write it out here and find the z-score of 296, let's say. So 296 minus the mean was 304, divided by the standard deviation. Crunch that in your calculator. You're gonna get a z-score of negative one. So if I were to do this for each of these observations, I'm gonna write their z-scores. X, these are the observations, and I'm gonna write the z-scores underneath in blue. The z-score for 304, that is a distance of zero from the mean. Negative one, negative two, and negative three. Positive one, two, and three. So when we, when we convert this distribution to all of its z-scores, it's called the standard normal curve. And the standard normal curve um, has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. I'll talk more about that later. What I want to show you now is, um, is how to find these values using the z-score instead of using the observation. So each observation, like 280, is equal to a percentile as well as a z-score. For example, 304 is the 50th percentile because it's in the middle, and it has a z-score of zero. So one thing you might see as you're working through this is using the same problem that we used already, what percent travel less than 296 yards? So if you remember, we did this right here what traveled less than 296. So we took this in our calculator. And we did normal CDF with those bounds. Well now, since we know the z-score is negative one, we could simply find the z-score, which I already have, and do normal CDF from, I guess I'll sketch a picture here. If the z-score is negative one, then I am trying to find the area beneath a z-score of negative one. So my bounds are negative infinity up to a z-score negative one, and the mean of the standard normal curve is zero, and the standard deviation is one. So if I were to type this in my calculator, CDF from negative infinity up to the z-score of negative one, with a standard deviation of zero and one, then that is going to give me that 15.87% that we saw earlier. So you can see there are multiple ways to find these proportions that we've been talking about. Let's look at the next problem and find the z-score for Tiger Woods 290 yards. 
So I'll do 290 minus 304 divided by 8. So if I were to punch this in the calculator, 290 minus 304 divided by 8, that's going to give me a z-score of negative 1.75. So now I can use the z-score or I can use um, the observations to actually find the proportion that are at least. So this is when drawing a picture helps because this is now a reminder that I'm going from a z-score of negative 1.75 and I'm looking for that area that is greater than. So I'm going to actually do normal CDF from negative 1.75 to positive infinity because I'm going forever with no upper bound. And the mean is now 0, 1 because I'm using the standard normal curve. And if you were to type this in your calculator, you will see second distribution CDF from negative 1.75 positive infinity with a mean and a standard deviation of zero and one and that will be 95.99 which is what we saw earlier and if you remember from earlier the proportion that were greater than 290 here's that same exact value so really, I've just showed you two different ways you can use the values or convert to a z-score. And the reason I want to show you that you can convert to a z-score is because a lot of the answer keys that you'll see in the way that the AP Classroom prefers to do it is talking about converting it to a z-score. And they use what's called table A. So on this, on this page, I'll talk to you about what table A is. So here is an example of the standard normal curve. 68% fall between negative one and positive one. And the standard normal distribution always has a mean. It's a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And it comes from converting all the observations to their z-scores. So the observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Now, instead of using a calculator, you can use what's called table A. And table A is just just a list of areas with their corresponding z-scores. And I'll show you what that is from this example here. Find the proportion of observations from the standard normal distribution that are less than 0.81. So do a quick sketch of the standard normal curve, mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And we wanna know if the z-score is negative, oh, not negative, positive positive 0 0.81. What proportion of z-scores are below that? So we're just going to do normal CDF from negative infinity up to 0 0.81, and the mean is 0 with a standard deviation of 1. So if we type that in our calculator, uh, you're going to see that the proportion of z-scores are 0 0.791. So about 79% of z-scores are less than a z-score of 0.81. So using table A, you're going to take that z-score, 0.81, and on the AP exam, you'll get the AP formulas chart. And one of these pages has table A. Here it is, table A. And you can see it gives you the z-scores and all of the probabilities to the left of that z-score. So our z-score was 0.81. It was positive. This first page you can see are all negative. So those are all values below the mean. Ours was 0.81. So if you look at the z-score, 0.8. Go over here is 0 0.80. Here is 0.81. You can follow it from up here. 0.81, uh, the area to the left is 0.791. And if you remember on our calculator, that's exactly the same value, 0.791. So that's what they're referencing when they're talking about table A. I will never require you to use table A, but just in case you come across it on a test, I want to make sure that you know what table A is. So let's do 
one more example here, or two more. What proportion of the observations from the standard normal distribution are greater than negative 1.78? So a quick sketch, negative 1.78 would be below the mean. We can use table A to figure it out, or we can do our calculator, normal CDF, our range is from negative 1.78 up to positive infinity. Mean is zero, standard deviation is one. And you know that because it's the standard normal curve. So type that in your calculator and you will get 0 0.9625. Let's double check that on our table A. So the Z score we had was negative 1.78. So the first page has negative 1.78. Here is negative 1.7. So go over to eight. So here's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see here 0 0.0375, 0 0.0375. It's not the value that I said earlier. And that's because the table tells us the error less than. The question was asking us for what's the area at least with negative 1.75, so greater than. So what we have to do is subtract this from 100. So if you do 1 minus 0.0375, then you will see that it's exactly the value we said from the calculator. So on the table, this is the value that it said from table A. We need to subtract that because we're finding the area greater than, and the table only tells us the area less than. So one minus this gives us 0.9625. So you can see both will give you the same, uh, same outcome. So for this last one, I want you to be used to the notation here. This is asking you, what's the probability of getting a z-score that is greater than this and less than this? So a quick sketch from negative 1.25 to positive 0.81. We're looking for this shaded region in between. So we're going to do normal CDF in the calculator negative 1.25 up to 0.81 with a mean of zero standard deviation of one and so that gives us our bounds and that's going to tell you a proportion of 0 0.6854 so about 68 percent of observations are um, of, of z scores are between these two values go ahead and try these independent practice problems and check your work with uh, the answer key provided.